Hello my soccer universe and welcome to finally the Europa League review. Yes, it's almost 24 hours since the last game against Royal Union saint gilloise Let's keep it at USG because Royal Union saint gilloise is a little bit of a mouthful to say. Ended and I typically want to get out the video sooner, ideally even shoot a short video. However, Friday mornings uh, at the moment are a little bit hectic. And then add to that um, that I uh, that we went and were at the game yesterday, so sleep is not little. I finally got there. We'll do that. But overall, I'm in a really good mood. Lusk played really well against USG yesterday. Really, really, really well. And although the other result in the group, you needed the win to stay alive, you're not eliminated, but the other result in the group did not go your way. And so there is a good chance that you will not survive uh, the winter in the Europa League or even the Conference League, be it as, as it may, beating the first place team in Belgium. 3-0. That is a statement. And actually shows the really good form that Lusk did have over these past three to four weeks where beating Salzburg, beating Sturmgaard and having a very, very, very unlucky loss against the Royal Union saint gilloise I said it once more against USG, away from home, one that I still bemoan a little bit. We'll have to talk about that as well. So uh, the way I'm going to do it is, uh, since I did not do any video, I mean, you saw my short on the last loss at USG, um, potentially that I shot in Venice uh, when I, I was there, so you may have seen that one, but I did not talk about the other games. So like I did with the Champions League and the Conference League, I'm going to at least have the results from two weeks ago also in there but will focus heavily on match day four you will see always going the results and the current standings through so as a little bit more complete information as we go on in the first part of the video i will definitely focus on lusk and the situation in group e then we go through groups f and h and then at the end we go through a to D. So that's kind of the route that I've laid out for this video and I know I'm talking already a little bit much, but let's go. Let's talk Group E and yeah, last four. I mean, uh, two weeks ago, Liverpool got an easy win over, over to lose 5-1. Everyone expected that. But Lusk knew that after throwing away the game at Toulouse, not maybe throwing away, but you should have gotten a draw out of that game at least because that Toulouse team was nothing, honestly. It was as disappointing as last performance. Should have gotten something out of there. You knew you have to get something from USG. If not win it, at least get a draw. And they played really well in the first half. Unfortunately, playing in pink. And I actually for once want to defend it because I think the black jerseys with the yellow and blue would have not contrasted too well. I think that UEFA probably said maybe the pink is the better option. I actually agree with that. However, I also understand... The pink is not a color that Lusk fans want to see. So that caused 20 minutes of delay in support and actually had uh, repercussions at the last home game as well. Be it as this may, Lusk played the first half really well. Yes, it was maybe even, but I have to, have to say, especially in the second half of the first half, um, Lusk really took over. They took the lead through Moses Uso and should have gotten a second one right there. The problem is that he took enough George Bello because he was also already on yellow card and wanted to avoid going a man down and these changes didn't work well and Union saint Julius, I keep saying it, USG got back into the game. Um, but Lusk were whole, whole holding on, but the longer the game uh, went, the more they were holding on. And I can tell you right there, I mean, I was watching this uh, in Venice and I kept telling to, to my wife when she said, How, how's Lusk going? Yeah, I'm, we're leading, we're leading, it's really good what, what they're doing. And then I was going, the longer it went on, it was more like, if they concede one, they will lose it. And it's exactly how it came. Giving away a stupid penalty, uh, looking at it and know, he knew exactly that this was not what he needed to do. You concede an equalizer and then I thought they get at least a point out of this one. They actually had a, a chance, but you were kind of hanging in there. And four minutes of stoppage, I say, at least you're getting a point out, out of it. You had the ball high in the opposing half, and then you give away a free kick. And from the free kick, the last kick of that game, Burgess has, has it in. This was really damning and very, very bitter. I'm not saying it was an undeserved loss, 
but it was a bitter loss. And that, in a way, informed yesterday's game, uh, where Lask, I mean, they have been out for revenge. But the game didn't start really in, uh, intently. I mean, uh, I was first of all surprised that the game still, yes, they sold out all the tickets because you only could get for the three games. And, you know, Liverpool, the first game, you're going to sell that out. Uh, but most people showed up, which is something I did on this next expect. The only place where there were some really empty seats was the away section. This time my brother couldn't come, so it was me, uh, me, my wife and my father, which is always fun to have that combination. Uh, and yeah, the game started out relatively tight. And I have, I have to say, it, at least in the first half, I had the feeling that uh, USG is a harder opponent than Sturm Graz, and that says some, something. You could tell that this is a really good team. However, Lusk were really aggressive for most of the time and got in, into the game. And I would have, have to say, starting from minute 20 on, Lusk were better. Yes, you more or less scored with the first real chance because it was a good, a good attack. There were Uso take, takes a shot, and Burgess, the guy who hit us so badly, Handball in the box, it's a penalty, penalty stands, Jules this time is not taken because he missed already two, and it is Sasha Horvath who has been amazing, and yesterday again, the, the amount of running and working that this guy does, I really think he should be in a national team, he steps up and easily converts that one. And while USG had in a few... Uh, see, see, that were a little bit dangerous. They didn't have a shot shot and goal. It was, uh, either went high or it was blocked or uh, it, the attack fizzled out early. It was the last who had good, really good chances and won uh, through Uzo and Schul. Uh, the Schul uh, Schultz uh, again goes to Burgess on the hand and falls to Uzo, who is unfortunately offside, who bubbles the net. We thought, 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 it's 2 2 nil. And you think again, yeah, it's only 1 nil at, at the half. However, deep into stoppage time. It was already a 9 9 I mean, a really nice attack. Uh, again, Uzo Schul to Bello, whose shot is parried by the goalie. We get the corner, still the corner kick. And uh, from the cor 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 corner kick, uh, Talavierov, Maxim Talavierov, uh, now Ukrainian national team player, heads it in in his first goal for Lask. And that's 2 0 at the half. Exactly what we had, uh, had against him, but this felt actually like, like a good lead, especially since Lusk played really well this first half. Second half, USG makes a few changes, and I have to say for the first 20-25 minutes, uh, maybe it took 5 minutes to get into the game, but then for the first 20-25 minutes, and uh, the problem is, this was all again on the other side. We didn't get much of the game this time around, usually against Liverpool and against Schlum, we had all the game with us, now it was more on the other side, but hey. You win it. But USG did create a lot of pressure and Lusk had a really hard time getting out of, of the pressure. They barely could stitch two passes two together before USG player Gal got again. And you really had to dig deep a little bit. And that pressure lasted. However, it didn't result in any chances. There was one lucky piece where um, TS surely would have given away a penalty. Hands penalty. Fortunately, the player was before in offside because otherwise it would have been a penalty for USG and that might have uh, tightened things up. Also huge credit to the Lusk crowd on, on this evening. They have this new game where they sing a song, the a fan block splits itself in half, one sits completely down, the other one standing, singing, sit down, the other one standing. They did it for about a while, but after five or six minutes so you could, could see that the next um, on the uh, side those guys started to sing this too, and then it became a back and forth between those. And then at the end, it made the entire stadium. It was Fan Block Stadium, Fan Block Stadium. And that entertained the entire graph for at least 10, if not 15 minutes. And this was exactly in this pressure phase where I think this gave a little bit of lift properly to the players as well. Then with some changes, and after a while, you could see that Lusk is taking on the fight a little bit more. And uh, for the rest of the game, USG did not produce a shot on goal. They almost had the same amount of shots on goal, uh, li uh, shots like Lusk. But Lusk had, I think, seven on goal and USG had none on goal. Um, and then it came with some, some changes. Uh, there's a uh, cross in. Ljubicic heads, heads against the crossbar and that is now in front of us. And Schul taps it in. 3-0. And that was the game. Uh, there were some thoughts that it should have been more, but I think the 3-0 is already a pretty decisive result. Again, this is the leading team in the Belgian Pro League. 
with four points ahead of, of, of the race. Beating those guys 3-0 is no small feat. After the game... It was a great experience. Unfortunately, I already we already saw uh, because one of the guy next to the wall was checking shot that at the same time to lose were winning against Liverpool 3-2. And that doesn't compute. I mean Liverpool 5-1, yes, they played a second string team, but being down 1-0, very unlucky at the half. Then they make it 2-0, although they bring on Soboschlei and uh, Salah. Toulouse makes it 2-1 and Liverpool pulls on back another own goal. Immediately Toulouse making 3-1 and then they actually push with Jota getting another goal. And they give, Wool would have gotten e equalized, which is a result that I would have taken, more or less. But it's a win for Toulouse. And now in the table, this means we have Liverpool with 9 points. They are not through. And they have to take the next game seriously. And who are they playing? These guys. Lusk. Not happy about that. But um, hey, 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 maybe this might actually... No, not because we to lose on 7, uh, USG on 4 and Lusk on 3. Meaning if Lusk lose in Liverpool, which is something you would expect, and then USG win against Lusk, Lusk is already eliminated, which is a scenario I don't like. Um, I hope that everything else goes a little bit like form, that you know uh, it's a draw between Toulouse and USG. And then Lusk can win on the last match day against Toulouse, whereas Liverpool beat USG then Lusk would at least uh, get a third spot. So that would be what I would like. But again, I am more happy about that statement win and that they finally got on the board. Uh, you have the points, you make some money there. And maybe it's not even that desirable to go over in the conference league, although it would be good for uh, the Austrian league and the five-year standing. So that's Group B. Let's go into Groups uh, F, uh, F through G. Uh, in Group F, we had one game, the one of Maccabi Haifa, because of re recent events, was postponed. It's happening now on the 6th of December. Whereas the other games, that Ren beat Panathinaikos 2-1 away from home. And then in the return against that Ren, getting a 3-1 against Panathinaikos, despite being a man down. Um, kind of showing that Stad Ren, if they want, they can do something. We are real get a 2-1 away win at Maccabi, but it was played on neutral ground, so uh, not really that group. But I think uh, Ren and Villarreal are probably the ones going through here. Uh, in Group G, we had, after the last round, Sheriff and Servet playing 1-1 and Roma beating Slavia 2-0, uh, where I think the biggest problem connection is that the uh, Italian authorities didn't allow the biggest away tee forever by Slavia fans to be displayed. Slavia fans displayed it then on another day uh, in their uh, own stadium in the center circle and also I think displayed the same thing uh, on their home, home home game where they completely dominated Roma and deservedly won 2-0. It could have been ugly. Roma did not show up. The best thing about Roma are those beautiful third jerseys but everything else was ugly and disgusting what Roma showed. And in this form, I don't know. Maybe Roma was saving themselves for the derby on the weekend, which is not beyond them. But this was a major, major disappointment. Uh, Servet, though, uh, turn around a deficit against Sheriff Tiritiris Bowl, which is uh, in, in, in two and win. Although Sheriff also got two red cards, so that was definitely helping in this way. Still, Slavia and Roma should make it out of this group. That's for sure. Uh, now that they're level on points and even 2 0 or 2. Um, it's the goal difference by Slavia at the moment is leading. In Group H is already Bayer Leverkusen through, although they got a, uh, easy first an easy win at home to Karabakh and then kind of a lucky late penalty win through Boniface um, at Kaka Karabakh ye yes, yesterday and Molde did the double against Hecken 5-1 at home another emphatic result and 3-1 uh, away from home, Hecken clearly outclassed and it will come down to the final match between Karabakh and Molde 
I would say in the last he was Lever Leverkusen does there as well. But it will come down between those two with Karabakh having a little bit of an advantage. Uh, going over to uh, Group A, we had uh, West Ham losing to Olympiacos away from home, but they got revenge. Yeah, yeah, yes, they're winning through a really well played Paqueta goal, uh, 1 0. Fortunately, it counted because that, 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 it, it was a brilliant play. Uh, there was an offside given. Whereas Freiburg uh, got all the points against Bacca Topola, uh, 3 1 away from home, and then yesterday 5 0. Although uh, in the first half it was much tighter, tighter, but then in, in the end Bacca just fell, fell apart, and all the substitutes for Freiburg wanted to score. Uh, it is West Ham and Freiburg there. I mean, Olymp Olympiakos 9 9 4. Olympiakos do have a chance, but I would think that uh, West, West and Freiburg will get to. Will probably, I think West and will cruise, and Freiburg uh, will probably just need a point against Olympiakos. And that's that. Group B, the hipsters group, uh, looks now all OM and Brighton to, to be honest. Brighton does the double over Ajax 2 0. At home and 2-0 away from home. And the same thing is for OM against Ajax, also doing the double. Um, I like the TIFO of the Ajax fans uh, proclaiming the friendship between the two teams, which is really cool. I'm sure that OM did the same thing in uh, uh, Marseille as well. But with those six points that Brighton and OM did, they look not cool, good in the group. And remember, this was a group that Ajax started out really well by beating Brighton. Uh, so yeah, and Ajax look already in deep trouble there with only two two points. I'm not even sure that they will uh, go into the Conference League. Group C is very much Betis and Rangers at the moment. Yes, uh, Betis have lost the game, but they do the double over Aris Limassol. Yes, they could have been more. I mean, they missed even a pam 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 penalty, but it was a pretty uh, comp comprehensive performance. Uh, Sparta and Rangers played out in the and Yes, the Rangers won. They were better than Sparta, uh, to be honest. So it looks like Rangers and uh, Betis will go through from this group. And then in Group D, we already have Atalanta through because they do the do uh, they uh, win the head-to-head, -head, head against Sturm, so if Sturm go level, with still Atlanta being ahead. Uh, the first game was actually a pretty impressive performance by Sturm. They had a 1-0 lead and Atalanta through Muriel got two goals. Sturm going man down and still get an equals. We're pushing for a winner. This would have been a famous result for them. Yesterday, uh, tense and tight first half and the second half, Atalanta just better. Converting one thing, things through Jim City was kind of a messy goal, but it could have been many, many, many more. Sporting actually lost uh, points at Rakov away from home, which is a little bit so, so, so surprising, but I think they played with 10 men. Um, yesterday they got two penalties, Rakov was reduced to a man, but the Rakov also scored, but Sporting also looking good, given that they won already in Graz. I mean, Sturm will need to win there to make it through, but I think the current 1-3 to three is probably also the final 1-3 to three in this group. Or the overall favorites. Despite the loss, Liverpool are still strong, strong favorites. And if you ask yourself, why are they such heavy favorites? Well, they are by far the highest rated team. They are also the team that already has qualified more or less for the next round. I mean, it is expected that they will qualify for the next round. And the other opponents are not that strong. Yes, from the Champions League, we see there could be some heavyweights coming in. And you see them all from uh, Milan down. It's still Liverpool is a much higher rated team and the chances of these big teams going in, yeah, it is well, 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 what it is at the moment. Leverkusen is rising, so they are second and I think I will second that in a way. Brighton, Atalanta, Roma. Uh, if Roma continue playing as they are, uh, it, there's no chance. I bet uh, Betis and West Ham should be considered as well. So uh, if it doesn't be Liverpool, it could actually be quite the broad field. Now, the upcoming games here we see for groups A to D. I mean, Atalanta against Sporting. Uh, let's see what Atalanta will do. We see also Freiburg against Olympiakos is a pretty big one. Uh, OM Ajax, Ajax against Brighton is a very tight group as well. If Sparta want to move on, they probably should get something because Rangers is probably going to win against Aris. Uh, Liverpool Lusk. Okay. And to lose against USG, I think, is a pretty big game. And yeah, that's about it. And maybe Molde against Karabakh. In any case, those were my observations. Again, I'm happy. I'm not happy with the way the results turned out, but I'm over happy with Lusk showed. This is for me the most important. It shows that the direction is there. 
I said it already, I don't want to emphasize too much, right? but if they can, can conserve this type of form that they show at the moment, and that's a big if, there's a chance that Lusk do some damage in the league this year. But I don't want to say more because I have seen it before. And Lusk is always, Lusk is Percy. Let's put it this way. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below if you want to add anything. You know, I rushed over Sev's so and I'll be giving a very detailed account of my team. But you know, it's my channel. It's my soccer universe. So there you go. In any case, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.